So what sort of made you start out on your first entrepreneurial? Um, probably to prove to myself you could do something. You know, you can talk a lot on the Friday evening in the pub about how bad your job is and how it doesn't work. And But the realities are you've got to go and do that yourself and prove it. Um, so I think that really sort of stimulated the whole process. Um, and that puts a lot of pressure on you to deliver. And I think if you've got that inbuilt default position, that by nature takes you into that entrepreneurial world of, you know, doing it. Yes, for yourself, but bringing others with you and convincing people that ideas can be not necessarily in vogue. I mean, launching a free newspaper like City M, don't go in print, certainly not free and certainly not now. I and mean, that was the three messages in 2005 that we entered into. So um, I suppose it takes tenacity, people and, and, and just that spirit of delivering together. And uh, that suits nicely. And was there anybody that particularly inspired you along your... Um, I, I think a guy called Jan Stenbeck, who's a sort of Murdoch equivalent in Scandinavia. Uh, my partner, Jens Torper, uh, for his intelligence and his tenacity. Um, probably Eric Newman uh, from the outdoor world, who's sort of, I think, the most successful media person in the UK. I think his company talent is now number one in the small businesses in the Sunday Times. But it's delivered totally by his dedication to that company, the people, and letting them take responsibility for that charter and where they're going. So he, he really has inspired me. Great. Uh, and if you were advising your younger self now, yeah. what advice would you give you? Um, when you're going on the entrepreneurial, uh, uh, what do you call that thing that goes up and down, a roller coaster? Yeah. The door doesn't open when you want it to, to get off. Right? And that's a lesson that everyone should know or at least have a little bit of awareness before you start, because it is quite bumpy, and yes. And that feeds quite neatly into the next question, which is, what was the biggest mistake that you made? Um, gosh, I mean, you could have a crash comment saying you should have done that earlier. Um, I think probably the undercapitalization of, of the business when we were doing online two years ago. So we spent the last two years developing that through cash flow. And maybe what I should have done was maybe say, actually, we should regroup and get a little bit more capital and do it that way. It's been a hell of a lot harder, but then your business is the same shareholders and it's not got any more debt. So you could argue the other way, but it would have been easier. Yeah. And on the flip side, what, what would you say you were most proud of? Creating a brand. You know, I think, you know, the FT has been in London for, you know, over 180 years. We've been around for 12 years and we've definitely got an empathy with a brand that that is, um, is strong with our readers, you know, it's a self-selecting product, but if you're a business person, um, you'll read it, you'll integrate with it, and you, you actually like it, you know, so at that part, I, you know, maybe once every three months I might have a little whiskey and look at it and go, yeah, it's all right, but when you run the damn thing, you don't have many moments like that. Yeah, and finally, what do you think is the value of networking groups like E2E for, for entrepreneurs? Um, I think the experience is, in, in, in an environment when it's not showing off, right, no one wants to know how good you are, right, but to realise openly the mistakes you've made or the other insecurities that you have, that you can't quite maybe say to staff, because it's quite lonely up in the, in the attic with your own train set. Um, I sometimes wake up some mornings, I have to put toothpicks in my mouth to make a big smile. Well, I know I'm very sad, but I've got to be that person that has that. That, that, that focus of, of positivity. Groups like this, you can have an open conversation saying, Christ Almighty, last month was terrible because of X, Y, and Z. Or, My VAT bill was so big last month, I nearly couldn't afford it. That is when you start to understand that all businesses have their problems. Um, and when you have people around you in the same ilk and saying the same thing, it gives you security, but also confidence that you're not alone in, in those, on those uh, sort of challenges you face.